Hi, this is James Gunn of the Sydney Tech Geek, and I'm here today with John Kellogg of uh, DTS. And they've done something very interesting this year in that they've introduced or um, introduced a new open standard for immersive audio, or sometimes called 3D audio. So I'm here with him today, so he can tell us about that. So John, just just can you tell us what DTS is doing here and how it's going to affect this industry? We're introducing an open, object-based audio immersive audio platform called MDA, which is multi-dimensional audio. Um, it's a completely open, flexible platform that allows uh, uh, any content provider to mix a film with pure object-based audio or channels or a hybrid of both. It's completely flexible, so you could do a mix, for example, with 12 speakers and deliver that, and it would also map to any standard cinema format, 7151, even stereo. Yeah, so I just went through the demo, and just to make that more clear, we're talking about, you know, have a DCP has a 5.1 mix or a 7.1 mix. We're talking about a DCP, for example, would have a MDA mix. So. An MDA, yeah, an MDA file or yes. deliverable, yes. which would be the object-based audio mix that would basically map to anything. That's right, so being anything means that one DCP could be played in a two-channel cinema, a 5.1, 7.1, or a N number of speaker cinema, where you have speakers anywhere above, below, etc., and you have a, a 3D rendering engine. What's that rendering engine called? Well, it's called MDA. I mean, it's a it's a renderer. We call it a renderer as opposed to a player because it takes that object-based file and it, with a configuration file, it maps it to the proper number of speakers in that given room. And but what's the file format that that renderer takes? Isn't that an open it's standard? An, it's it's an MDA file. Okay. And that rendering engine is called an MDA rendering engine. Yes. So with that rendering engine, basically you can. Play it, that one file can play to any number of speakers. Right, any any number of speakers in any location. Now this is important especially for distributors because we're talking about uh, the, the creation of one DCP for the requirements of all cinemas. We means doubling up of inventory is a massive problem for distributors. So this is an important issue. And it's also an important issue because it is an open standard. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's specified to simply I think it's going to, etc. Well, we're proposing it as an open standard. Okay. It's an open platform, meaning that uh, we will be making this available to, you know, in the field of use of professional cinema and pro audio. Um, we believe there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of interest in making this part of, a, uh, of an open standard. It is currently an open platform. Very good, and that means that uh, pretty much most uh, organizations can compete in making the tools to make this standard a reality. Correct. Look at this the same way as PCM channels now. PCM is open. Yes. We've been using PCM channels forever for everything from mixing to delivery from stereo 5171 and on. The way we look at MDA is this is just another flavor of PCM. It's just PCM objects plus metadata, and that metadata describes three basic things. When the audio object plays on a timeline, how loud it plays, and where it is in an XYZ coordinate. Well, see, that's a very good explanation. Making It's just a new form of PCM in the new realm exactly. of immersive audio. So it's very easy to understand, so that's a really good comparison, I think. Now, some of the... Uh, uh, issues with this is uh, creation tools. So creation tools will really drive this. So what's been done in that area? Um, Fairlight has introduced an MDA creation and export tool. Uh, we have a reference uh, development tool that we make available and we have a lot of interest from tool manufacturers to work in any DAW uh, from Pro Tools to Digital Performer, Nuendo, that are all looking at building plugins and tools so that anybody can basically create object-based immersive audio with MDA. And, and that's also for the um, other side, the sound processor side, there's also a reference uh, implementation of that as well? Yes. Yeah, we have. We definitely have. Uh, we've had a number of companies like DMS announce there will be others that we're going to basically be supporting the playback of this in the cinema environment. So, for example, um, they might introduce a, sound, a cinema sound processor that uh, could be utilised to implement this into their auditorium with X number of speakers. Correct. Okay. That's correct. 
Well, anyway, that's a great overview of the technology and what you're up to. Uh, I really appreciate it, John, and uh, thank you for watching. This is James Gardner, the CineTech Geek, at CinemaCon 2013. Bye for now.